everyone. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to set up an Astral VPN inside uh, DDWRT third party firmware. Um, so if you have been or if you are living in China, you know the hustles of having to uh, access your uh, the, the international uh, websites or applications and stuff. So um, in that case, you would actually have to set up your uh, VPN, like for this case, my Astral VPN or your Astral VPN in your phones, in your computers, and other stuff. <clears throat> So as to access them, access the international websites. So as uh, for that, the solution would be to have uh, VPN routers. Uh, there are paid versions where you actually would have to um, pay monthly. Um, if you are in China, you'd actually have that option to actually buy a VPN router and you pay a per monthly subscription. But if you already have an Astral VPN that you already are paying for or any other which actually do support uh, like let's say Tomato or DWRT or Asus Merlin, then those can uh, those uh, VPNs can also be installed into routers. So you need to actually check on what exactly uh, which supports which and stuff like that some research needs to be done but based on what I'm giving you right now is actually to set up the Astral for most people which do actually use Astral uh, you can actually install it in some selected uh, VPN, in some selected routers so today what I have is a Linksys um, Cisco Linksys uh, router which is an EA6900 uh, I bought this off Taobao and this has uh, from the seller they pre they actually I requested them to pre-install they have that option so they pre-installed the base flash version uh, a, a base version for DDWRT so uh, in that manner um, you can actually use uh, DDWRT from the get-go in that way but for the version that I actually for the, for the way I want to set up the uh, the Astral and all the other setups that come along with it, this base version does not work well for it. It will actually fail very frequently. So, uh, since DDWRT is an open source uh, like firmware, where a lot of people you know build on it more and more and more, then that uh, and a lot of you know testing and trial and error there are. It needs to you need to actually do some research on it but this is a shortcut to like show you which actually has been working for me so far I'll be showing you the the store that I bought this from there's no way uh, in no way actually promotion you can get it in any Taobao store uh, I'm just uh, sharing you what I where I actually got it from and then I am going to uh, show you um, how I'm going to I'm going to flash this router to a version uh, or the model that I actually want the firm, the DDWRT firmware to be. So currently it's actually on a 2014 model. I'm going to set it up to a 2020 model. And after uh, setting it up, I'm going to change the IP, uh, set, make some changes within the uh, system. And then also I am going to set up um, a thing called a Wi-Fi repeater where I am the, the uh, this router is going to link up with the home router that I already have and then use that as a uh, uh, the uh, connection for the internet and then this will actually give the internet towards the devices that are going to be connecting to this link to Cisco so in the end I'll have two routers one will be local and one will be international uh, so uh, right after that, we are going to actually uh, uh, set up the uh, uh, Astro VPN applet into the Linksys Cisco once we have already set up all that steps. So let's get to it. So here we have uh, the... Um, I'm going to be showing you. This is the page that I actually uh, found on Taobao where I actually bought it from. 
so you can see here they have the options where you can actually install in the DDWRT or here is called mailing it's uh, called Merlin uh, so either one you can actually get it in pre-installed it's better to get it pre-installed just gets uh, less hustle to it and you can actually flash it as well to the version that you want it to be set up on. So I'll be uh, putting the link of this uh, supplier's uh, description below. This is in no way promotion. I'm just sharing what I actually have found uh, from my site. So just cut the time cost of you searching up and down on Taobao. If you want to buy from any other store on Taobao, feel free. Uh, as far as I can say, they had the they had a very good customer service, and um, so far I'm satisfied with the product that I've actually received from this. And uh, I did get one issue with the uh, 5G where I actually notified them, and then they actually even helped me change uh, to a version that actually was perfectly fine. So uh, the only issues would be with uh, this routers, all of them that we would actually find to set up the DDWRT versions are, uh, they have scratches on them on the, on the outside because they're very old, this is our second hand, but internally their PCBs have been refurbished to, to work optimally and uh, uh, like, like new. So they actually mentioned that in this descriptions as well. Uh, so, um, and let's just see here uh one thing is that um it's very essential to 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 know if your router is actually capable to uh, have a ddwrt installed on it the only way you can find out is by actually going into the ddwrt forums so for example here um on my uh for my linksys this it actually works and it supports it uh, so it's actually we can actually set up the uh, the DDWRT into uh, the into the router that I actually have. So if you already have a, a, a router, you can check here. Uh, you can check on the DDWRT websites, uh, the website forum, to see if it is compatible or not. So let's go on to it. So. <clears throat> My, uh, what I, what I already here have is I'm going to write down the 192.168.1.1. And, uh, before actually getting into that, I would actually need to connect to the, you can see here it's already pre-installed. So the pre-installed Wi-Fi here is DDWRT and I already also connected to the uh, Ethernet uh, the reason being that once I when I flash it when you have to flash it you definitely need to actually connect to the Ethernet so that there's it doesn't fail uh, with the Wi-Fi it sometimes will work sometimes it will fail so it's just guarantee it's better to actually connect it with that Ethernet cable uh, so I connected my uh, LAN, uh, my, my Ethernet cable with the LAN, not the WAN uh, port. Uh, so uh, you also need to connect with the Wi-Fi. It is not a problem. So here it's already connecting. And so now it's connected. I can just enter here. This is the first page that you'll find when you actually are in the uh, DDWRT page. So first thing of all that I would say is that uh, when setting up the username and password, this is by default, it is the, it is important. Uh, the username is fine, you can set up with any way that you want, but the password, once you set up the password here, it actually is gonna be the same password that you'll find once we reach a point where we actually have to set up a telnet. Uh, that part uh, is where we need to um, install the um, Astral VPN applet into the uh, VPN uh, into the router. So we need to make sure that the password that we are going to be setting up here is going to be the same. There, it's it's going to be the same password. That that's what I'm trying to say. So here I am just going to write. Um, 
admin. I'm just gonna write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I am going to change the password. Once the password has been changed, you can see the front page, uh, which is the status page of the router. <clears throat> so here you can see the LAN IP is actually 192.168.1.1. Here you can see the firmware version is the base version, as I was saying, is the uh, uh, 2014 model. This is not to the one that I actually want. So what I'm going to do first uh, is I'm just going to go to the administration. So it's going to require me to log into the username and the password. So um, I had a pre, a pre set up, so I'm just going to write a sign in and then I'll go to the page called firmware upgrade. Once I go there, you will get to this page where you can choose, I'll choose here reset to default and then I have to choose a file. Here I am choosing a file where, I, where I'm going to be setting up the newer version or the version that actually works to uh, be as a repeater and also have the uh, astral applet. So the one that actually I've tried a few versions so far and the one that actually worked well for me is uh, a model uh, that here that I have. It's the uh, uh, 2020 version. This is the uh, model number. This is the, 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 the uh, time where it actually got published. Uh, so you can find that here in the support. Other downloads, you have many uh, published years over here. So from there, I got to 2020. And once you go to 2020, for example, here, I can, um, since I cannot open the page because uh, I'm still connected to the uh, router, uh, which doesn't have internet yet. So what it will take, I'll go to search for the links and then um, I found this date. I'll put the description uh the link on the description below and there you can actually find the link to download so once i already have this pre-installed into my uh computer which is right here so i'm going to actually go back to the uh, page the dd loyalty page i'm going to choose when i choose a file here i will go to this page over here so I'll, I'll choose this this is the one I actually want to download click open then upgrade so once I click upgrade this is the very essential part not to touch the router if you touch the router while it's actually flashing let's say when I say touch disconnect it or like let it lose power or something then it might end up breaking so once it breaks, it's actually going to be very much more harder to um, really like get back uh, to the system and stuff like that. It gets more complicated. If it breaks, you have ways to unbrick it. You'd actually have to check on the DDWRT forum. They have good pointers on how to unbrick. Uh, so it takes a little bit of research to it, a lot of patience to it to actually find that part. But you can unbrick it as well. Um, so right now it's actually upgrading, as you can see. Uh, so since it's when, once it actually reboots, uh, it will actually give the router itself will actually start blinking to show that it actually is rebooting. So we will get back after once it has rebooted itself. Okay, so it's been about three, four minutes as I've been waiting for it to um, uh, flash. So once it's completed, we'll just have to go and uh, connect. I already connected back again to the, D to the DDWRT Wi-Fi. And once connected, I'll write down 192.168.1.1. And then here we are. So right now you can see from the start is the firmware has changed to uh, this model, 
uh, is the the one that I actually was uh, uploading, the, the one I was actually flashing. So again, here we are going to have to um, set up the username and password. Same rule, password is essential in the later time when we are going to set up the Telnet. So here I'm going to write down again admin. Here you can write down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, the first week. Um, so now we're already on the front page. So the first thing that we would want to do is to actually uh, change the uh, LAN IP address. Uh, so we are going. Where here we're going to do that. So here we go to setup. Um, and then here you would, uh, for example, for me, I would actually write down 192.168.2.1. All right. And, uh, you can set up this one will actually change in itself. Uh, I will just write down here, for example, I can do maximum DHCP users to, for example, a hundred. It's fine. Uh, and then click on save. Once we click on save, the very important thing I would say is to actually keep a watch on the timestamp. Once this actually starts changing is when you know that this, the, the uh, save has already been finished and then we can go to the next step. So once I've done that, I will do apply settings. So this will take about maybe um, a minute or so, a minute to two. So we need to actually wait for that to actually change once it actually has when we are once this has actually been changed when we try to log into the 192.168.1.1 it won't be available what will be available is the new IP address that we have already set up so we will wait for a bit and then we will actually um, log in with the 192.168.2.1 so right now, uh, we already have the link here. Since it's already changed, the LAN IP has already been changed and now it actually works. If we actually try to get onto the 192.168 here right now, it wouldn't be able to log in. As you can see, it will just be like rotating and then it will be like showing null in the end. So here we are in the 192.168.2.1. So the first thing we're going to do is to go to um, administration here. And then we're going to we're going to turn on the telnet management. Once we turn the telnet management on, we actually save first. Look at the timestamp. Once it starts changing, that means the telnet has actually started. Uh, that actually has already been uh, set up. And we can either re uh, reboot router or apply settings. So um, we could just like apply settings. We don't need to reboot the router. If we have to reboot, the router is going to actually uh, take a little bit longer. Sometimes they give that uh, recommendation, but for me so far, not an essential part. Um, so once uh, the uh, settings have been applied and then you'll start seeing some changes on time over here, then you'll know that the uh, telnet gate has been opened. So we'll wait that until we see changes. We see some changes here so that telnet would actually be open right now. Before getting to that point, what we'll do first is to go to um, services. Uh, no, actually we'll go to security. <clears throat> so we will need to actually uh, set up a repeater, uh, which I will actually show you later. Before we actually set up a repeater, we need to actually deactivate this options, which is the ARP the block anonymous one request leave the filter cast multi filter multicast on it's fine uh 
turn off this filter ident and turn off the block one. Uh, you can also turn off the filter multicast, it's on your choice. It doesn't make a difference if you do or not. Sometimes it's better off to turn it off, but I'm gonna leave mine on. And then you can leave your SPI firewall on. Some recommend to turn it off before you, if you turn off the, 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 the SPI firewall, you actually have to turn off the um, filter, filter multicast and then you actually disable it. Uh, but for me, I'm just gonna leave this enabled and the filter multicast kicked on. And then I'm gonna click on save. Wait for the timestamp to change. Okay. Then I am gonna click on apply. The thing is, it's very essential to whenever you're in different pages to actually make an apply mode because that way you don't end up having too much uh, packets of information to be sent onto the device, which is the router, uh, and then it's it, sometimes it works okay, sometimes it actually won't set up properly. So you need to actually apply settings again. Some um, one level of the setup it actually would not go well. So next we'll go to the wireless. So here is where we are going to set up the. Um, the repeater and the wireless here we when i'm going to make the repeater we're not going to connect the uh home router with the linksys router that i have here the second router we're not going to connect it with ethernet we're just going to connect it through wi-fi so there are options here there is the 2.4 gigahertz and here is the 5 gigahertz i have a dual band router this is a dual band router so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one of them, one of the uh, physical wireless interfaces into a repeater. So I'm going to use the 5 gigahertz. You can use the 2.4. Here you've got the options here, client, client bridge, repeater, and repeater bridge. If you use a repeater bridge, it's not going to work. So that's because when you make a repeater bridge, it's pretty much making it like a Wi-Fi extender. Um, so I'm, you can choose 2.4. I'm going to go with 5 gigahertz because I have a lot of devices which are under the 2.4 gigahertz in my house, like smart devices. So I don't want them interfering with those. And there are less devices that are in the 5 gigahertz bandwidth. Uh, if you would want to check if uh, which uh, is more congested in your area, you can download uh, an application called Wi-Fi Analyzer. I got this on my Android, my Samsung Android device. So here I can log in and show you the, um, the uh, channels that there are and how much congestion that there is on the 2.4. And then there's also here you can check on the two uh, on the five gigahertz as well, and based on that, you can see which one is better to actually use. Uh, so here we are going to set up the repeater. Uh, once I click on repeater, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to write the SSID, which is the Wi-Fi that I'm going to be linking this repeat this linksys to my home router. So my home router's uh, uh, internet is called for my for my uh, five gigahertz is called there is no Wi-Fi, uh, pun intended. So <laughs> um, I am going to input here. There is no Wi-Fi. It's already saved data here. So that and just click on save first wait that for wait for the timestamp to change okay now you see here the all the other options which were there before are not there anymore um, so you can leave it as it is nothing to change over here but you can do here is that you can actually set up the 2.4 the, the, the 2.4 gigahertz into an access point so I will write here link to 2.4G and I can set up a virtual 
uh, access point for my 5 gigahertz. So before doing that, I'm just going to click on save here. And um, as I showed you earlier with the uh, wireless channel, you can see which ones are less congested. So I can, for example, get here on my 2.4 gigahertz, see which one is less congested. So for example, for me right now, I am looking at it and it seems that the channels from 11 to 14 are less congested and the most congested are from um, 3 to um, 11 somewhere like that so if i do a vertical here i think you can actually be able to see uh, which parts i'm saying so here i will be choosing for example 11 so that it can be more efficient when it actually uh, connects so the network mode you can leave it as mixed uh, but if you already have it preset on what network mode you already have you can actually choose that as well that depends on your home router uh, as well. You can actually see if you don't want to like get the network mixed up as much as uh, you can try to get it less mixed up as much as possible. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna click on save here. All right. Uh, once I see your time change, I'm going to add virtual AP which means virtual access points here. I'm going to also write down Linksys 5G, then save. All right, so before uh, setting up all this, I'm gonna go to wireless securities before apply settings. On to wireless securities, here is where I'll set up the passwords for the devices I've actually made. So for the Linksys 2.4G, I'm going to make a password, I'll just make that W. Okay. You can unmask and see the password if you want to. I'll just leave mine unmasked. So this one is um, uh, so first of all, which I forgot to do is to actually choose all the options for which kind of security that I want them to be on. The best is to actually make it into a WPA2 um, PSK and then after that write it down because you can see as you can see earlier when I actually wrote the password down here and then went to the next one it actually uh, got disappeared that's why you actually do the save thing uh, so here I'm just gonna write it again and then for this one this I'm going to write down the password for this Wi-Fi which I'm just going to be linking with the home router so here, okay. And click save. And then we will do apply settings. So once we've done this, once the connection has become successful, you will see over here the one IP change from 000 into uh, a new IP address. Um, you can also check by doing uh, uh, a run here. I did, uh, you can write down ping 8.8.8.8.8 minus T and then click OK. and then wait until you see some connection happen. So you can check on both ways, uh, it's upon your choice. Uh, so once it's connected, it will actually show uh, the IP change here or uh, it will actually show results from here as well. Uh, so now you can see here the links is 2.4 G is available here and there is another one the links is 5G here so you can connect to any of them down your password
next. Okay. So if that so happens, then we'd actually need to wait a bit and then see. Uh, So it takes a little bit of a time. You need a little bit of patience to it. If it doesn't, if it didn't set up again properly, the best way to actually go at it is to um, uh, go back into security settings and then, uh, like, uh, like maybe change something. Uh, let's say change this and then save and apply settings again. That way, it will uh, reconfigure the device to uh, connect again. So. There's a little bit of like a trial and error to it sometimes. Uh, so right now you can see here that the Linksys 2.4 gigahertz has connected, but there is no internet. So when that actually happens, what you can be able to do is to, um, okay, it's not connecting on this one yet. Uh, so what we'll be doing here is we will actually make this one disable and then uh, click save here so what I'd recommend at this point in time is to actually disconnect the Ethernet cable from the uh, device because now you already have your Wi-Fi set up so sometimes it the Ethernet intern, uh, can actually become a nuisance. It just is a um, little bit sensitive sometimes. Uh, so we'll just do apply settings here. Since we're already connected to the uh, Linksys 2.4 gigahertz here. Now we're we'll back. So we'll see if once it connects over here, uh, once we see a connection here, then we'll know that it's already working. Okay, so uh, right now it shows that it's actually connected. Um, when it shows that it's actually connected, that means it's um, already got an IP. So you can see here, you can see here that like the reply is coming back. Uh, so it's so actually working. The only thing that I did is actually change the five gigahertz um, Linksys, the, the, which is the virtual access point that I created. I just changed that just so that it can like reset on uh, trying to establish connections so the my router has already established connection with the, the there's no wi-fi router so i can get the password back again and then save and apply settings oh okay yeah And then we will see the uh, where you can see here the links is 5G doesn't have uh, a lock anymore. It will actually have a lock at this point. So once the uh, Linksys has connection, what will happen is the router will actually blink a light. So that way you can actually see when the network has been disconnected or connected. I think that's one benefit that I'll actually say about the Linksys routers. So as you can see, I'm also connected to my five Linksys 5G and uh, there is also my Linksys 2.4 somewhere. Um, I just turn it off, turn it back on. Can see both are available here yeah so you see it's already connected uh, and uh, now what you can see here is that I can get on uh, for example uh, Bing or something like that so now the next step is actually setting up the uh, Apple net the, the uh, Astro VPN so what we'll do is we will actually turn on the Astro and then after that we will actually log in into our Astro website so for example here I'll just choose uh, this right here and then log into Astro Okay, 
So I have my password and email set up already, so I can be like here. Okay, once I'm logged in, you can just here is the overview page. So you can uh, go down, and then here there's an option called router setup. So you can ins click on install now. Here you'll get the thing called an SSH console which is that this is the thing that you're going to be inputting in the uh, telnet. So we're, now we're in the step of the telnet thing that I've been mentioning about. So you can just turn off the uh, uh, stroll here. Just going to do a quick proxy check here. I'm going to make this automatically effect. And so uh, before actually copying this, I will show you here. Uh, so when I actually set up the 192.168.2.1, I the password I made was this, for example. That's for me. Uh, just that's just to show the tutorial. And once that when I try to log into the telnet, it's actually also going to be the same as well. Okay. So first, what we're going to do is we are going to go on commands. I already have commands here. So run as administrator. Okay, and then what we will do is we'll write down this telnet 192.168.2.1. Just copy minus here, and then here I'll paste it. All right, and then I click enter, and then it will take me to the login page. So here. As I have shown you here on the login part, you'll actually write down root, enter, and then on the password, we'll write down the same password that we actually used for uh, setting up the password for the 192. So 123456789. Enter. The reason it doesn't show the password is because it's hidden. That's why you don't see uh, a lot of, uh, even when you're typing, you don't see any changes happening on the password section. So now we have entered the DDWRT, uh, uh, the Telnet page. So here is where we're going to paste the, this information, which is actually going to help us install the uh, Astral into here. So for example, if we want, we can actually do clear or we cannot do it as well. It doesn't make a difference for me. I just like to have a clean slate. And then after that, we already copied this uh, link we do a right click to paste it and then enter so it will do its magic okay so once it's actually installed it will be available on my page so it will give is this giving you an instruction of where you can actually find the astral vpn so astral is installed under the tab status then my page so where you will go is you'll go here, status, my page, and then voila, we have Astral installed into the router. So here you can actually, for example, choose favorites on um, uh, the, the uh, servers that you actually like using or you frequently use. I, what I do is I actually choose all the china based or the ones which are close by as favorites and that way you can actually if the network goes down it can jump from one of the favorite servers to the next favorite server which you can actually set up here so you have all the uh all the uh servers as you would find it on your astral vpn all in here you can uh, take your time and select all those uh service as favorite and then you can actually do the next step so i'm going to select the ones which are my favorites first so now i've actually selected all the devices all the service that are actually favorites for me so um as you can see here i did one my last one so the ones which are seen as favorites are actually have a f in them uh, before the uh, name of the server is listed so once you've done that, uh, you can go ahead with um, clicking here, enable accelerator and auto reconnect 
so you can choose the protocol here. You can do the TCP or UDP. UDP is actually uh, has less security like uh, levels, if I understand, but it connects much faster. TCP has a little bit more um, uh, security to it, I guess, and uh, but sometimes it would actually lag a bit. So if you don't mind about, you know, it's just accessing the internet and stuff and like, you know, you don't mind about security, then you can go ahead with the UDP. And if you actually might think that you need like the heaviest security, band, then you can go ahead with the TCP. So I'll just go with the UDP and then I'll click on save. Uh, one thing you also can do is click on uh, start automatically as well. Click on save. So one thing of all is on uh, this applet, you will not see a time the time change unless you actually click on other pages because it's a different. Uh, it's not part of the internal system. It's just something which is different from the system itself. So it doesn't matter. You can just go like here. You'll see that oh the time changed. Blah blah. blah you know. So um, then you can connect. Uh, and then when it's connecting, you'll see the status here right now. So it's connected. So when it's connected, it will show you the same way as you would connect, for example, a stealth VPN. And so it will be like authenticate, configuration, blah, blah. And then once it's connected, the page will actually sometimes like go blank, like as you see it now. And that's because it's actually already on a VPN connection. So if you can refresh, you can refresh it as well. You can see here now it's connected. So we can here check here and test out the. Uh, I've already prepared a video to see how good it can actually function. This is, for example, a 4K video, and we can see here refresh it. Let's see the speed right now is really bonkers. Right now we're in the server. You can go to 2160 as well. It's uh, pretty much working off. So that's pretty much it. You already have a VPN router. Uh, so one thing is that another thing is that for sometimes. Um, some devices, for example, in my experience, my smart device on uh, my uh, Samsung, Samsung Smart TV actually had issues with connecting to the internet once it actually uh, got on Astro. So when the Astro is connected, so the you can what you can do is you can actually, uh, for example, just connect here, and then. Uh, you go to about and then you can click on reset settings when you just when you do that the only thing that's going to be resetted as far as my experience is to say is the uh things that you might have preset around here and uh the enable accelerator the things that you already ticked out here so you can just tick them back and then you can shift to tcp because it needs to be on TCP if it's not connecting properly. And then click on Enable Accelerator, start automatically, save that before you connect. And after that, once you click on Connect and then you try to connect, for example, for, in my case, to a smart, to my uh, smart TV, then um, it will be able to connect flawlessly. So it's just that an issue with DNS, uh, which that's when uh, that's what uh, the Astro support customer service actually told me as a troubleshoot. So every once in a while, it might end up disconnecting and then like having this kind of issue. So when it actually has uh, that kind of problem, you can uh, have this as a troubleshoot or a solution. So this is just another uh, pointer. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you guys uh, have uh, are able to uh, set up your VPN router as I did. And if you have any uh, 
problems or if you have any issues with your um, setting up your VPN router, write down the comments and then I'll try to get back to you with my best knowledge. Thank you very much. Goodbye.